Fred and Francine are having a disagreement. Fred has a box of mass 30 kilograms, and Francine has an airplane of mass 30,000 kilograms. Both want to move their objects with an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. Fred thinks he will need less force to push the box. Francine thinks it will take the same force. Who is right? We can answer this with Newton's second law. Newton's second law says the net force acting on an object equals the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. You'll notice that we have arrows above force and acceleration. That's because they are vectors and they have a direction. Remember, the net force is the sum of all forces. So when we calculate net force, we have to account for all forces acting on an object and add them together. F1 plus F2 plus F3 and so on. The acceleration of the object will end up being in the same direction as the net force. So are the forces the same? The forces required by Fred and Francine. For the box, our force is going to equal our mass times our acceleration. We don't need arrows in this case because we're only looking at one direction, so we don't need to break our forces and acceleration into horizontal and vertical components. The mass of the box is 30 kilograms, the acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared, so Fred needs a force of 45 newtons. For the airplane, we use the same equation. Our mass is greater, and the force required by Francine is 45,000 newtons. Are the forces the same? No. Fred's prediction was right. Now Fred is going to move a box of 50 kilograms with a force of 100 newtons. Then the mass gets doubled and he applies the same force. What happens to the acceleration? Let's break down this equation by looking at relationships between the variables. First, relationships can be directly proportional. Directly proportional means as one variable increases, the other increases at the same rate. For example, if y is equal to a, which is a constant, times x, y is directly proportional to x. x is also directly proportional to y. When this is true, if you double x, you will double y. And you can see that on the right-hand side, if you multiply it by 2, you have to multiply the left-hand side by 2 also. If you have x, you have y. So if you divide the right-hand side by 2, you have to divide the left-hand side by 2 also. In Newton's second law, we see that relationship between the force and the acceleration. The acceleration is directly proportional to the force when the mass is constant. Also, the force is directly proportional to the acceleration. The mass is directly proportional to the force. If the acceleration is constant, mass and force are directly proportional. If you graph two variables that are directly proportional, you'll see that the graph is linear. Here's an example. If my force changes from 1 newton to 2 newtons, you see that my acceleration changes from 1 times its initial value, 1 times a1, to 2 times a1. And they increase in a linear relationship, which ends up graphing a line. We can also have variables that are inversely proportional. Inversely proportional means one variable, as one variable increases, the other decreases at a proportional rate. An example would be y equals a over x. In this case, y is inversely proportional to x. x is also inversely proportional to y. If you doubled x, which is on the bottom, it's the same as having y, or taking y, multiplying it by one half. If you triple x, it's the same as multiplying y by one-third. For our Newton's second law equation, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. If we assume force is constant, acceleration equals force over mass. Mass is also inversely proportional to acceleration, because mass equals force over acceleration. On a graph, an inversely proportional relationship would look hyperbolic. So here's an example. As you increase the number of blocks, you increase the mass. So two blocks is twice the mass of one block. If we had an acceleration for one block of a1, we increase the mass to be 2, 
our acceleration is now a1 over 2. And as you continue plotting points, you create a hyperbola. So let's see what happens with Fred. He's pushing a box with the same force. What happens to the acceleration if the mass doubles? Well, we've said that mass is inversely proportional to acceleration. So if mass doubles, the acceleration decreases by one half. Let's look at it mathematically. For a small box, force is equal to mass times acceleration. We can solve for acceleration for the first box, and we get A equals two meters per second squared. For the larger box, we can do the same thing and we get A equals one meter per second squared. And our mathematical answer matches our theoretical prediction that acceleration was decreased by one half. Now that we're talking about forces, I want to address uh, the concept of weight because weight is a force and oftentimes weight is confused with mass. So I want to clarify and make sure you understand the difference between mass and weight. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Weight is the gravitational force felt by an object. So the amount of matter in an object will not change, but the gravitational force will change. And gravitational force we write as F sub G. This is weight. F sub G is the same as weight. We can use Newton's second law, which says force is mass times acceleration, to calculate a value for weight because force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration of gravity, which is g. So the force of gravity or the weight of an object does change depending on the gravitational acceleration. Mass is measured in kilograms. Weight is measured in newtons. Mass we measure with a triple beam balance. And weight we measure with a spring scale. I'm going to end with one example. Let's say we have a box here and three forces act on that box. In which direction does the object accelerate? We want to look at what are the direction of our net force. So if we add all the forces together, what direction is our net force? And that will tell us the direction of acceleration. In the, in the y direction, you can see that there's a little bit of a positive force, F1, and a larger negative force, F3. So overall, in the y direction, we have a negative force. In the x direction, we only have a force in the negative x direction, F2. So our net force is going to be negative in the y direction and negative in the x direction, or an arrow going in the uh, third quadrant. It will look like this arrow. Our net force shows us the direction of our acceleration, so the correct answer is D. Another way to see it is by adding the vectors together and figuring out what the resultant vector looks like. So to add vectors together, we'll start with F1. To add F2 to F1, we're going to do what's called tip to tail. So this is the tail of a vector, and this is the tip. We go from the tip of the first vector and start the tail of the second vector. So this is F1. Now we've added F2. And from the tip of F2, we're going to add F3. Now we have our three forces. Our resultant starts at the beginning of F1 and ends at the end of F3. This is our resultant force. So this would be the net force on the object, and that's the same direction as the acceleration in choice D.